Hi, I'm David and welcome to LeisureBit. And today we're going to be upgrading the inverter wiring in the setup. Uh, I originally used these ones which came with the inverter to some heavier duty ones as per the recommendations because I've found these run a little bit warm when you're running above one kilowatt continuous rating. So let's go and take a look at that now. So in my original setup, I'd used a pair of these uh, which came with the inverter and they connected to the negative and they actually fed off from this end, the two of them there just paralleled up from the smart shunt and that fed back round to the battery. And then off the positive, I used a couple of these and I used some of these 125 amp breakers and I used two of them to give me essentially 250 amps which is the output of the BMS on the lithium battery so that gives us a good three kilowatts there however I found that these were actually warming up uh, both the breakers and the cabling and when cabling increases in temperature it increases in resistance and when the resistance increases it heats up more quickly which wasn't helping the situation and I noticed this uh, when I was actually cooking some microwave meals a couple of times. Short things, you know, if you're cooking a burger or something like that, no problem whatsoever. But when you were cooking something like, like a full meal that took 10, 15 minutes, probably about seven or eight minutes in, the microwave reset itself. So I investigated further because it happened a couple of times, you know, the first time you think maybe just a bit of a fluke and uh, had a look and realized that the cabling was running a little bit warm. And as I, as I mentioned, that then increases the resistance, it runs warmer and so on and so forth. And you don't want to have to keep stopping the microwave, letting cables cool down and moving it on. It's not what it was intended for. I also noticed that the current consumption was dropping on the microwave as time ran by. So it'd start off at maybe 150 amps. And by the time it got to the point cut off, it was below 100 amps, which means it's not running correctly. And I looked in the uh, literature that came with the inverter and in reality, the pair of cables that came with it aren't really rated for the full load that the inverter can take, uh, you know, especially if you're running things like coffee machines or microwaves for a long time. Not that you run the coffee machine for a long time, but, but, but you get the gist. You can run the microwave for quite a long time. Anyway, so I decided to upgrade it and I've gone for 70 millimeters squared and I'll pop on the screen now where I got them from. It was simply split charge. I got this kit from and they came ready crimped, uh, which is handy. You can choose to crimp your own. But personally, I find crimp, crimping a pain because when you're pushing them in, it always feathers out and it, it takes forever. So I'm sure there's a knack to that. And I watched a couple of videos to see if there was a better way of doing it. But it's still a pain, isn't it, when you're crimping that size and you need the correct gear for it. I wanted to remove these because as a few YouTubers have reported, some of these are of variable quality. And one of the problems when I checked it was the resistance on this was increasing as it warmed up, but it wasn't tripping or anything like that. So if you actually tripped one of them, so all was going through one of the circuits, there was just insufficient power because of the resistance when it warmed up to run the microwave, for example, but not, not tripping the breaker. So I decided to remove these. The smaller ones I've not had too much problem with, um, to be fair but it's definitely worth checking those out before fitting them. So I'll run through the changes I've made now in, in the setup as if you've done something similar, it's probably worth considering, especially if you're gonna be running a, an inverter over a kilowatt or certainly one and a half kilowatts. So let's take a look at that now. Right, so we'll just do a run through. So the positive feeds down here into the mega fuse, which has a 250 amp mega fuse. That then feeds along here up into the inverter isolator and that's 70 millimeter squared cable there copper that then comes out of there and up 
to the back of the inverter when it connects to the positive terminal then you can turn the isolator on and off there so it gives you easy access to isolate the inverter the negative connects off the other side of the inverter here it feeds around the back and then goes on to the smart shunt which is here the other side of the smart shunt then connects around to the battery here and that completes the circuit so that's the inverter connection while i was on i also upgraded the to put a fuse in line uh, with the main feed that basically feeds onto the charger and to the camper van electrics so we've got in here and we've got a 50 amp fuse in there that then comes down round here and then goes into this breaker now i know what some of you are thinking why have you connected that breaker in but it's just a handy switch off and that was a bit bulky to fit in that then feeds back out of there and through into here so sorry that's where it comes in so that comes in there through that protective uh, conduit there and then it comes out and then feeds into my main distribution panel at the other side which then has other breakers on personally i've found the breakers with the little yellow buttons on take a look at that in a moment um, to be absolutely fine i've done some testing on those and they do trip out pretty much at about 50 percent over the rated current which is perfect and this is my solar feed which those of you that saw originally that was in the middle so i've just moved that along so if i need to isolate the camper van electrics i can just press that and open it up if i need to isolate the solar that one and then the various circuits round here so that's my upgraded setup so i've got a fuse as extra protection on both the inverter and on the main feed into the camper van now, i've tried to keep these leads as short as possible and in places where they're less likely to touch anything and then any faults beyond that term um, is covered the battery does have a short circuit protection on so that helps as well but this kind of makes sure everything's double protected or triple protected to keep it safe so i'll just run through again that comes down here through a fuse along to here a bit of protection there up through that breaker and then into there's a bus bar behind here as you'll have seen in the previous vlogs and if you haven't seen that please watch the lithium series which goes through all of these different bits we've then got three breakers so the first one is for the charger the second one is for the dc power sockets so that's like my usb c usb a kind of connections and anything else on a power off that that actually runs from this solid state relay here the reason for using a solid state relay if you haven't seen the previous vlog is to save drawing current powering a mechanical relay and that basically works when the camper van electrics is switched on the reason for fitting that was to make sure i don't overload the original panel there and it just separates the circuit out but i take a feed to know when the panel switched on or off there which powers that up and that feed comes in through that um, orange wire there with the yellow connection on and then that just basically the other connections on the other end of that we've got a negative which we connect here or an earth whatever you want to call it connects back to this bus bar and there's a connection to the bus bar just out the back here that goes through there but i've not actually connected the inverter back to this bus bar i'm just taking the negative straight off the smart shunt just to minimize cable lengths and make it easier to run and that then just serves as for anything to do with the camper van and i've also got a small fuse box here for various things where you don't need to isolate them but you can knock the whole thing off here if you need to switch everything off one of the fuses feeds up for the smart shunt power there and that's pretty much everything um, as you would expect and the third connection is the main feed into the original control panel there so again you can isolate that without isolating other bits if you need to work on something and again i've found these pretty reliable and have done some testing on them these ones less so so just be a little bit wary if you're getting any of those and like anything it's worth having extra protection so i've got a 50 amp fuse 
protecting all this and I've got a 250 amp fuse for the inverter circuit and tried to keep those as separate as I can there. So that's the upgraded wiring, replacing these with a proper fuse and double cables for 70 millimeter square cables so that we can run the inverter at higher power without overheating the wiring. If you've got any other suggestions, please drop them in the comments below as I'd love your feedback because there's always cleverer ways to do things and there's always safer ways as well. But I'm now quite pleased with this because it feels much safer. It's certainly not warming up like the dual cable that came with the inverter is. So I think much happier now. And the microwave doesn't stop now if you're cooking a, a meal for 10-15 minutes in it. Brilliant, eh? I'd love your suggestions if you do anything differently there. I'm now pretty pleased with that because everything's running as it should be running, even when you're cooking a meal that takes a little bit longer time to cook. Much happier now, no issues whatsoever, and things aren't warming up now, which is brilliant. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!